What's up everybody? Welcome back to Built for Life. I'm Joel and today got a little quick impromptu video I was not expecting to make. I haven't put any thought into this video at all, but I had something pop up and I wanted to share it. I actually just published the making money with the CNC video yesterday and towards the end of that video I actually had some trouble while I was cutting out the flags and I noticed some level differences so like it uh, was a little bit thicker over here than it was over here when I was trying to cut it out and you know immediately I'm like well I need to surface my bed uh, it, it was a little cut up anyway from for, for different reasons uh, so uh, I pulled everything off and I got to looking at it I'm like man I really do not have much room left on this board to surface so uh, I was like I guess I really need to replace this in this spoil board and get some new spoil board so I actually went online, I was trying to look uh, to find something I could just order, ship it here, bolt it on. Uh, and I actually talked about this in my review video about the Shapoko 5 Pro uh, when it came out, or I think I had had, the, had this a year, and that was one of the things that I complained about is the spoil board. It's kind of, uh, it's for, each strip is 49 inches long and just a hair under three inches wide. And, which is not that big of a deal. You can easily make it, but it's, you know, in my mind, I go straight to a four by eight sheet. I got to break that thing down, cut these strips up, and then I got to machine the, the screw holes into it. So that's a couple hours of work. And, you know, a couple hours of work sometimes is just worth purchasing it. Carbide Create doesn't offer them as a package deal, so you can't just go buy 12 slats from Carbide Create. Um, the market has adjusted and people ha have put out stuff into the market. Uh, there is uh, somebody who's making them for the 2x4, but nobody's making them for the 4x4. So I was like, well, uh, I can't find anything, so I'm going to have to make it. So I started looking for MDF, and I really wanted something thicker than 3 quarters of an inch, um, just so I, I could have it longer, I could surface it more times, da 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 And I got to look in for 1-inch sheets of MDF, 1-inch thick. I can't find it anywhere. Um, Places say they have it, but they really don't have it. And then randomly, something popped up, and it was MDF trim. So this is uh, premium painted MDF molding. Uh, it is three and a half inches wide and one inch thick. And I'm like, man, that is perfect. And I looked through all the forums. Nobody's talking about this. Uh, so I actually ran to, uh, I got this at Lowe's, ran to Lowe's last night. I bought uh, six 12 foot long uh, sticks of this. It was about $80, which not crazy. Uh, it, if, if I could have found 10 foot sheets, uh, 10 foot sticks, it would have been better. Uh, but all they had was 12 foot. Uh, so that 49 inches kind of really messes you up. But no big deal. I was like, man, it's one inch. I don't have to break down a four by eight sheet. This is, see, everything seems like it could work. So uh, I got it home and then this morning I trimmed it up because it is three and a half inches. So what I did was I went ahead and uh, took a strip off of this side and then so that I wouldn't have the, the white sticking up from the paint, I went ahead and took off the other side too. So I've got it uh, the same dimension as the, uh, the original slats. And last night when I was, while I was looking around, I did find a PDF uh, and I will link that in the description. And what it is is a, uh, it's a PDF schematic for these slats right here. So it's got your hole locations, your hole sizes, because there's two different sizes, because it's a countersunk uh, for the Allen head screws. Um, and I went ahead and made a file for on Vetric to cut this. So uh, now, so after I took all my spoil board off uh, last night with my son, who had a great time taking out screws, uh, I am going. I had to put it all back on now so that I can um, set it up. And I basically made a file, and I'm in the process of setting up stops and fences so that I can just plop one in, run it take it out, plop it in, run it. Um, so that's the goal here. And uh, I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, since I didn't see it on any forums or anything like that, I was like, well, let me share this. Maybe somebody will get some relief out of it. 
because, like I said, it was kind of one of my like annoying spots with this was uh, spoil board. It would also be like if a great opportunity if somebody uh, did have the shop and the time to just go ahead and pre-make these, uh, and I I, I would have just bought them. I mean, these were eighty bucks. I would have easily spent uh, one hundred and eighty bucks to have them shipped to my door. Uh, easy one hundred and eighty bucks to have them shipped to my door. Uh, and I'm sure there's other people out there the same way um, that would have been like, hey, I would, I'd rather just, just buy them. So uh, if you are set up for it, you do have the time, this would be the perfect opportunity. I will leave uh, the um, link to the PDF in my, de in my description of the video. And then I will also load the DXF and I'll see if I can load the Vetric file onto... Uh, the Built for Life Facebook group. I'll put those files in the files uh, area so that you can go and uh, grab them. They're they're everywhere online. They're in the uh, Carbide 3D forums anyway. Um, well, the PDF schematic is not the DX. I don't know if the DXF was um, the DXF and the Vetric file, I'll, but I'll put it on the uh, Built for Life Facebook page. You can go download that for free, um, and hopefully it helps you out. So I'm gonna load these up on the machine and. Cut out the screw holes, and seems to be a good fix. We'll see. All right, so I've got the first board clamped up. I went ahead and cut them all on the table saw, trimmed them all down, uh, and now I've got my first board in place, clamped down. I think in a way that's repeatable. I've got some stops to kind of make a fence that I can push it up against. Uh, the way I did it is I put a V-bit um, in the machine. I ran it as far on X, uh, as I could this direction and I brought it down and that is my X um, zero. Uh, I put the board there to match it with the V bit, you know, so it's pretty precise on this corner. Uh, then I put in my blocks to kind of clamp it into place. And then I ran the X axis all the way down over to this side. I moved the board into place and then put in my stops and clamped it. So I didn't just use the spoil board to square it up. I actually used the gantry um, and the bit to square it up on the x-axis because uh, with something this long, it could, you know, one little, because of angle of measurement, one little bit uh, of um, angle and you, you could be, you know, a quarter inch off on your hole. So I went ahead and took the time to square everything up really good. Uh, I've got stops in, so it's repeatable. So theoretically, I'll be able to throw this file in, cut it, take it off, throw another one on, hit go again, uh, and uh, we'll see how it works. Well guys, that totally worked. This is a definite viable option for your spoil board without having to wrestle around with a huge four by eight sheet. Uh, it sold at Lowe's and Home Depot as a three and a half by one inch painted prime trim. Uh, and yeah, this is gonna be my go-to for replacing spoil board. So uh, if you like this video, if you think it helps, hit that thumbs up if you wanna see more Hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, let uh, YouTube tell you when I'm putting out a new video, and we'll catch you on the next one.